Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to the 90 hour build. Conspiracy, what did I call this guitar? The Complication. I think about guitars a lot. I think about the guitars I'm building a lot and yet when it comes down to the actual doing of each process, I often change my mind. I've been thinking about stability and this is actually stable and fairly, fairly strong and it's all good. And the plan is that I'm going to, or the plan was, the plan as you currently believe it is, is going to be that I carve these into triangular shapes like I did on the tester piece, which is floating around in here somewhere. I've changed my mind a little bit. There is no reason for me to carve into the, the inside of this shell because one, you won't see it very much, although from the edge you, you, you do. Um, two, it, it would weaken it a little bit. What I'm going to do actually is a triangular shape. Here you go, there's a triangle. I can do a triangle. Hey, what's up? Yo. Um, and then I'm gonna bevel in the edges or, or cham not chamfer, I'm going to, it's going to be beautiful. This is gonna look so cool. So we're gonna have a lovely point here where it goes down and in. I'm going to tidy up, obviously, um, any rough edges. Some of these are straight off the saw. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. These points of confluence, that's where, uh, that's where it's gonna be very interesting. What I'm gonna do under the bridge, I'm not sure underneath. So we're gonna have a bridge pretty much there. It is strong enough for a tunematic if we want one. The way this is actually just coming together, we're gonna have these lovely shapes here. Yeah, that, that's gonna be actually cool. Uh, we'll figure out what we do with the bridge afterwards. Check this out. Um, this is where drawing something just does it. So the way that all merges in uh, underneath the center of the bridge, I can do a bridge where, where the feet only sit in those two spots there. And, uh, and then we've got the, the carving and uh, just melting underneath the bridge. It's gonna be stunning. All right, I'm really happy with this. So we've got the center chrysanthemum almost coming in there. Everything else is looking a little bit organic. A little bit organic. I'm gonna do this via machine to a certain extent. Uh, almost everybody has a, a Dremel or a Proxon or a multi-tool of some sort. And uh, essentially that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this Proxon. Seen better days, but uh, is still functional and uh, some saber tooth uh, grinding uh, bits. Green is coarse and uh, that's what I need. I've got the rough carve inside that one shape. The other sides are uh, square still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve that, just that part there where that meets up and vice, and the same, same there of course, uh, etc. just around. And I'm gonna try and get this one piece uh, finished uh, to the standard that I want. I've done my prototyping, I'm happy with the way it works. Uh, a combination of files, rasps, and chisels and knives. All the good tools, everything but a plank, um, will get me there, but I want to uh, get it in my head uh, physically now. I work better by doing. Um, there's the theory and that's fine, but actually physically going in there and saying, hmm, maybe I need a custom tool for this job.
I have postponed the carving. This is getting, it's progress, but by gum it's taking a while. Um, the neck has been made now for a number of weeks and uh, the time has come to check the neck blank, see what's happening. Uh, hopefully it's nice and straight and, and good. And then uh, I'm gonna cut away the excess and see if it moves when I remove any tension that is, that is there. So uh, here we go. Now the blank is also longer than required. I ended up moving it that way so that we've got more of a curve uh, where you can see it. But uh, yeah, it's all good. Okay, now, straight edge. Oh. Seems perfect. Um, okay, I need two, I need two winding sticks. I need two winding sticks. <laughs> okay. Now the trick with winding sticks, you've got one that's got those on it, one that's just normal. Then as you sight down from one end, you'll see if there's any twist. Not sure if you can see that. There's a tiny, tiny bit of twist, maybe. It's infinitesimal. Okay, there's a, there's a, a very, very small twist in there. It's entirely possible I put it in during the planing process even. Now we have a roughly rectangular blank. I'm going to measure it from, from, the, uh, from the center. So I'd, I'd need to draw a center line. And uh, because I've got so much excess, I'm just gonna plane the edge to a point where I have a perfectly rectangular blank. And I will use that edge then to run the fence of the router and do the truss rod. Um, once I've cut the neck blank to length, then I'll see if I can see any twist or not and plane it flat accordingly. So that's the end of the fretboard. End of the truss rod. I have these extra bits of rosewood on the uh, outer edges. I'm gonna chop those off at some point, uh, glue them onto the edges uh, to make the headstock the right size. It's so routing for the truss rod. So 36 mil from the outside edge to center line, 34 mil from the outside edge to center line here. And essentially I just need to take a little bit of material off that edge. So plain woods hoe. Let's mark it out first. Do you know what? Um, I often use pencils where I should be using a knife, especially on a dark wood like this. This way I can see exactly what's going on. It's much clearer. All right, I've got this ready now. I'm going to mark with arrows the edge that I'm gonna run my uh, router off, because <laughs> that would suck if I chose the wrong one. And uh, I now need to hold this down to the workbench. And of course I had a bit that could have been clamped down. It's no longer there anymore. Uh, I'm just gonna use the masking tape and super glue trick. This is, uh, more than capable. There's my brush. There's my brush. Lovely. Super glue. Set the record. And this will hold down for, well, as long as I need it to, against lateral pressure. If you haven't watched the masking tape and super glue trick videos, please go and do so. And while you're about it, subscribe, etc. I 
I've double checked the how it all lines up uh, by eye, and it's it's all it's all good. Okay, first of all, we lower the cutter till it's uh, flat on the uh, flat on the board. Set the depth stop there. Set that to nine millimeters, which is the thickness of the depth, sorry, of our truss rod. And uh, we're pretty much away. Chisel, mallet, knife. This is gonna be under the fretboard, so it's not as essential to be totally precise as uh, it would be if it was visible, but perfection in all things, wherever possible. So uh, I'm actually gonna use a straight edge and uh, with a knife, scribe the line I want to cut to. I love the masking tape and super glue trick. Perfect. Okay, the width of the truss rod at the end here is seven mil rather than six. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just go in there with a chisel and open it out a little bit. You see how I'm supporting the chisel with my thumb. Truss rod fits. What I need to do is cut this outline now. So we're going to get rid of the excess I'm gonna work out the headstock break angle and how much uh, waste I can remove from here. And then I'm gonna cut the width. Again, we're drawing onto rosewood and uh, this doesn't have to be very precise. So uh, just a, a white pencil. There's my nut line. Now, this guitar has a fixed bridge so I can go anywhere up to about 12 degrees on the headstock break angle without an issue. I don't really, I'm not too worried about it in the first place anyway. So all I'm going to do, as this isn't a production guitar, is uh, mark out 15 or 16 millimeters at the end where the end of the headstock is. And I'm going to let the neck blank itself dictate my break angle, which is probably gonna be about 10 degrees, which is a perfectly valid neck break. It is not about 10 degrees. It is exactly 10 degrees. <laughs> My crown. We're roughly 15 mil there. Roughly 15 mil there. Ooh, what a noise. Okay. Now, you do want a volute, even though um, it's not absolutely necessary on a beautiful multi-laminate, strong, lovely neck like this. And you want the volume to be behind the nut, really. You also want the neck, wherever you're gonna be playing, to be as flat as possible for as long as possible. You don't want the volume to end up halfway through the first fret. Bear in mind, you've got an eight mil, say a six mil or a seven mil fretboard. You've got another couple of mil worth of frets on top of that, but uh, we've got the six mil fretboard. We want to have a neck that is say 23, 23 to 25, say, uh, 17 mil. Anyway, I'm going to give myself 20 mil, actually, I'm gonna give myself 22, which means I'm gonna be removing about five mil worth of material here later on. And this is because there was that minimal twist earlier. I do want to leave enough material in there so that if I have to completely plane the top, uh, even though that would may mean, you know, having to reroute some of the truss rod uh, cavity, uh, we need to have that room to play.
we have a decorative door wedge and a much more lightweight neck plank. Okay, uh, you'll notice I haven't done the headstock yet. Um, I'm gonna glue the extra pieces on and then uh, uh, plane the final angle in and then cut the outline on, uh, which will be perfectly fine. Uh, I normally sight down the necks. The curves really mess with your eyes. It's hilarious. I'm gonna, close up, let's do that. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's all good. Now, what I need to do is leave this. If there were any tensions, and there almost certainly are, because it's a, a wooden thing, if there is any tension in the neck, it is now that I've removed the bulk of the waist that it's gonna move. And uh, I am not going to uh, build another neck in this project that is not stable. Uh, so there we go. I'm gonna leave this for a week or two and uh, we will come back later. I suppose in that time I will, yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to glue the, uh, the, the side extensions on. No, I'm not, forget that, because I wanna do something clever. Um, I'm gonna do more angles in and, and stuff. So uh, yeah, that'll be later. Um, back to carving in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe. Seriously, subscribe. This is a series. If you subscribe, you get notifications and lovely things like that. And uh, quite frankly, I, I judge my entire life's worth based on how many subscribers I have at this point. So uh, you can make me feel better about myself. And I would appreciate that. <laughs> or not, I don't... <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a coffee. I need a coffee. See you soon. Cheerio. Please subscribe to my channel, please.